A warm welcome to all delegates. I, Dr. Dhanashri Mai, feel privileged to welcome all the delegates to post learn session of day one EFDP ESTP on effective research proposal and manuscript write on behalf of Gokula Education Societies, Sir Dr. M. S. Gosavi, College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research. I feel honored to introduce our today's third speaker, Dr. Mukesh Nandavi. He is currently working as Associate Professor and Head of Department of Pharmacology and Pharmaceutical Biotechnology at Delhi Pharmaceutical Science and Research University, Delhi. Sir has earned PhD in Pharmacology from AIMS Delhi. He has also received his postdoctoral training from Division of Cardiothoracic Surgery. The Ohio State University Medical Center, Columbus, USA. Sir has research uh, experience of 19 years. More than 19 years, sir, sir is researching on role of pharmaceuticals, neutra pharmaceutical, herbo mineral formulations, plant extract, and phyto constituent of for myocardial ischemia, perfusion injury, diabetes, obesity, and pain management. Sir has published more than 75 papers in peer-reviewed national and international journal. He has received around 2.5 crore total funding from government like DBT, DST, ICMR and Ayush as well as from the industries like Dabur, Charak, Madhubha and Sandu. Sir has received many awards. Few of them to enlist Distinguished Leadership Award of International Academy of Cardiovascular Science, G. Achari Gold Medal Award by Indian Pharmacological Society, Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India, Young Pharmacy Teacher of the Year Award, Early Investigator Award by International Society of Heart Research, Professor Dugirwala Vishwe Sharma and Professor Srimantula Satyanarayana Prize. Best Research Output of the Year successively has received for three years, 2012-13, 13-14 and for 14-15 from SK Evans Nimes University. Sir has holded various positions, out of which few are Secretary General, International Academy Cardiovascular Science, Indian Section, Treasurer of Society, of Society for Promotion and Research of Cardiovascular Science, Sir is a life member of various organizing bodies like International Society of Heart Research, International Academy of Cardiovascular Science, Indian Pharmacological Society, Association of Pharma uh, Physiologists and Pharmacologists of India, Indian Pharmaceutical Association, Association of Pharmaceutical Teachers of India and Society of Ethnopharmacology. With these few words, I welcome you, sir, on behalf of Gokula Education Society, Sir Dr. M. S. Gosavi, College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research. I request Dr. Mukesh Nandwe to take the charge of this online platform and start your talk on ABC of Research Grant Proposal Writing. Please, sir. Uh, very good afternoon. And um, first of all, I'm grateful to organizers especially uh, convener Professor Amrutkar, principal of the college, and uh, co-convener Professor Prashant uh, Pingle, uh, who is also IQOC coordinator, uh, and other organizing committee members for giving me this opportunity uh, to say and share my uh, few experiences in uh, research grant writing. Uh, first of all, let me tell you, uh, I'm not the, what you call, who received the best and maximum grants, but yes, uh, getting the grants from the various funding agencies and learning them, their priorities, their target areas, and uh, successfully get the projects uh, from government as well as industry. Uh, that is the only added experience what I have. So today I will share uh, that with you all. 
and uh, please share me if uh, you or any one of you from the audience knows uh, more than uh, what i am trying to cover through the my presentation i'll be most happy to learn from even audience okay so sometimes we feel that uh, there is no funding okay or there are some misconceptions as well like a government uh, institute and private institute or government university and private university then uh, post doc is required or uh, you need a lot of uh, what you call um, publications or you must have the uh, preliminary results okay so there are some concepts and misconceptions as well okay so through my presentation i will try to address them and uh, put some facts and figures so that uh, i can help you to little bit uh, in in adding your knowledge or the value uh, of current uh, approach okay so you know what is grant basically is a mechanism okay by which company or government agency or registered trust or uh, maybe your even university okay because few universities have a um, practice of giving seed grant or intramural grant okay so grant is a mechanism not a funding okay grant is a mechanism and that mechanism awards a uh, fund money uh, for carrying out the research study and related activities such as educational program service program demonstrations or research project and ultimately this activities are outcome based okay see it's it's not what you call anything uh, endowment fund or something it's very professional that if some agency is giving you grant that means some deliverables are uh, set up okay maybe uh, the dbt I, uh, icmr and the other funding agencies became so much what you call aggressive aggressive in terms of that they want the outcome in terms of maybe publication maybe patent maybe device diagnostic kit technology new molecule new formulation okay so basically they have a high expectation if they are funding or supporting to any uh, principal investigator okay so this is grant is a mechanism okay now why we apply the grant basically when we get a grant okay when we get a grant we carry out the research we conduct the program okay even even if you take the example of uh, uh, funding for organizing uh, fdp okay or a conference or a workshop or training okay so what is the end outcome those participants attend that training or workshop or the conference they are advanced in terms of skill or uh, knowledge okay so uh, uh sorry for uh, this interruption so why we need to apply for a grant is basically to advance the scientific knowledge in your field okay and uh, advance your professional career then 
it's also a uh, grant means as a as a what do you call a uh, grant means is a like uh, that experts in the field uh, that acknowledge your idea is important and worthy of uh, public or uh, private support sometimes funding agencies give grants uh, for some target area if i take the example of uh, uh, consultancy okay uh, company consultancy so company is facing some problem or they want to come up with a formulation or a device or a diagnostic kit so they will find out the expert in that area and um, what you call uh, provide the funding so that their purpose is solved okay so if someone choose you okay then it it shows that you are expert in that area hmm? then grant means an enhanced prestige of your institution okay you take the example of uh, maybe pci nac or nba or uh, even this nirf okay all these accrediting agencies and, and then they consider that uh, how much uh, intra extra uh, mural funding is received by that institution so more the funding that means your institute is really doing well okay that's a uh, what you call ultimate indication hmm? grant means a contribution to the financial health of your department school and agency okay so obviously when we when we get a funding depend upon which funding agency giving you funding depends upon that you will get a manpower you get a consumables then what you call contingency you get a overhead charges you get a travel okay so that and then uh, what you call instrument hmm? or maybe even software schrodinger and all this uh, online digital platforms okay so that basically improves your research infrastructure maybe digital infrastructure maybe uh, what you call physical uh, instruments and facility okay then grant means new opportunities for your research assistant now i told you that you also get a funding for manpower hmm? so imagine uh, you you are a professor and you are only interested to get the six phd students but if you have grants two three grants then you can still take three more or two more research assistants okay so you get basically manpower hmm? and when you recruit someone in the, your grant okay that person also get a funding support and uh, that person only has to work not worried not to be worried about the uh, finances hmm? and grant means a new program that otherwise can be too expensive for your institution to support and implement okay so imagine if your faculty if your institute's faculty have a what you call a, a vision that uh, you want to set up maybe a center for cardiovascular center for uh, nanotechnology okay so without any funding or private uh, grants okay this vision may be very difficult because you have to spend extra money to set up that center okay but if you are fortunate that you are getting government funding or center of excellence from a uh, what you call icmr then your vision can be easily accomplished okay now it basically enables the research attracts phd students you can build the collaborations increase the exposure is again a measure of quality okay it helps you to grow as an institute as a person as a university okay and it can help in promotion as well so to be very specific if you see the aict guidelines or maybe uh, from associate professor to professor promotion what they have that how many total years of experience then how many publications you have published and how many research projects you handled okay so these things are taken care or these things are considered when you are considered for or you are considered for a professor position hmm? so it helps you ultimately in promotion hmm? and can add some income through summer salary or can relieve the teaching okay 
summer salary or if you talk about the us and western world uh, faculty get their salary partially from the university and partly from the what you call uh, their research funding hmm? so if you want to continue as a faculty in that university you have to consistently get a grant so that your salary is supported by your funding hmm? and then can relieve the teaching so few organizations have what you call policy that if you have a phd students if you have a one or two research grants maybe 20% what you call uh, less teaching load will be assigned to that faculty okay so this uh, these are the various reasons that you should have funding hmm? now but let me tell you when you run behind the funding agent funding or uh, research grants you have to what you call uh, also take care of few things that do not distract from publications or other creative endeavors okay do not distract from publication that means that your objective to establish as a researcher is to get a grant consistently publish a good research papers and articles so that you establish as a researcher in your research community hmm? so you th that's a continuous process so don't get distracted that you want more and more funding and you ignore the research publication in fact when your proposal is reviewed reviewers usually see what they see what you want to do whether you can do it whether you are capable to do it okay and what what are the various indicators of capability whether you have a permanent position whether you have published papers in that area or in your proposed area okay and what is the already research infrastructure okay so these are the few things uh, are what you call checked and that's why you have to consistently publish a uh, good research papers in a ethical manner hmm? continuity of support i told you that uh, it's not what you call seasonal that you got a grant for 3 years and you don't what you call uh, work or apply and you don't have any funding for maybe 4 to 5 years that is not the right practice in fact if you are in a second year of your research grant you should start writing the research proposal okay and so that your continuity is maintained and third thing that be prepared for rejection okay see uh, it's not necessary that whatever you propose will be what you call interesting for reviewers okay there are so many factors that decide who will create the grant and not okay so if reviewers are confident enough that if the funding agency fund the principal investigator with a timely completion is possible or not okay then second thing that is there any publication and that is the basis like why last 3 years last 5 years publications are usually asked okay that is the main reason <coughs> so you have to take care of that then once you decide that uh, you want to go for a particular funding agency particular idea and particular area 
than develop a strategy. See, I, I suggest one thing that writing half-hearted multiple proposals and submitting to the multiple agency will not work out. Okay. In fact, you spend more time on deciding the strategy, deciding the funding agency, okay, and then only apply. When you apply against the call for proposal, chances are better. Why? Because in that case, funding agency already declared that what they are looking for. Okay. So for example, uh, DBT Neurobiology Task Force invites the call for proposal in <clears throat> GBM, glioblastoma, okay, or maybe epileptogenesis, okay. So that means they specifically want research proposal in that area. If your research area matches, then you apply, okay. Or sometimes DST feast, okay. So DST feast is an infrastructural grant. Maybe two to four crores they give, but for that, you should project your institute or maybe your department as a one entity, okay, where five to six faculty are there. They have a what you call cohesive, uh, what you call work collaboration. Then their area is also complementary to each other. Okay. So in that case, you have a bright chances of getting DST faced. Okay. So when you decide, then you create a what you call strategy. So set your own vision. What do you want to be known for five years from now? Okay. Assess your own capabilities, passions for research. Identify capabilities that you can leverage here at your institute. Okay. And create what you call milestone needed for a tenure. Okay. That is what is the best. Then assess the market. What I mean market? identify agencies and program that fund the related research okay so recently maybe last week only there was a call from icmr investigator initiated uh, research funding okay and if you if you see that call for proposal they have already highlighted what are the three major areas and under cancer, which type of cancer they specifically want. So basically, what are the five most common cancers occur in Indians they have included in their focus area. So if your interests match in that focus area, then this is the right call for proposal for you. Okay, so here identify agencies and program that fund related research. See, when funding agency area interest match and your expertise match, then you have a high chances of getting the research grant. Okay, if you apply the medicinal plant and pharmacognosy or Ayurvedic formulation and polyherbal formulation to the DBT, then they may not accept it. They do have medicinal and aromatic plant task force, okay, but they still want the translational value, okay, that when successful completion of that project leads to some product formulation, 
okay so that is what their expectation so if medicinal plant and aromatic plant then you should approach to maybe nmpb national medicinal plant board or maybe ayush okay if you have a isolated phyto constituent which you want to test in a uh, by means of a cell culture or in vitro assays and uh, what you call uh, in vivo animal uh, pharmacology then maybe uh, your dbt can accept it but they still think of a tlr value okay translational level hmm? and this is what the required uh, for dbt but in general if you want to talk on uh, or submit a proposal on uh, medicinal plants then then your ayush is the best funding agency okay then determine how your vision can be crafted to match the funding priorities okay and then once you decide that what is your area and which is the right funding agency then create a proposal writing schedule okay so what i mean by proposal writing schedule it's better that you submit against the call for proposal you should be aware that when usually crg core research grant call for proposal comes okay when ayush invite the proposals when dbt byrac invites the proposal okay or biopharma vision invites the proposal okay so if you are sure that usually uh, february or march they release the call for proposal then you should start your funding proposal writing activity 6 month in advance okay what why because i am telling you that writing the best proposal and submitting to the one funding agency is a best approach rather than writing multiple half hearted half hearted proposals and submitting to the multiple agencies in fact rejection demotivates de you a lot okay so it's better you you submit really a best proposal hmm? so create a proposal writing schedule now next step in securing the funding is identify relevant funding agencies research programs write a responsive proposal get feedback and then revise so these are the four major steps now how you identify okay how you identify the research funding you basically talk to your seniors okay or you visit the website okay you visit the website and uh, you visit the website of the funding agency and find out that what is their vision mission okay then what is their what you call uh, target areas and gain the what you call insights from the funding agency then usually search for the opportunities select the relevant opportunities okay and this is what the what you call in general strategy hmm? now when you identify okay you have what you call another way to find out that may be uh, visit your nrf funding uh, nrf uh, list okay so if you if you visit the last year nrf uh, list then uh, first five institutes okay so obviously first five institutes got uh, more research funding their students are well placed okay and so many factors but i am i am considering that they are in a top 5 that means they got a maximum marks on a research component okay so this institutes get the research funding from which funding agencies you can search that okay many obviously they are in a top 5 that means they have right practices as well what right practices that maintaining the research uh, what you call research profile of all faculties they have a research activity corner 
where which are the funding agencies, what is the title of the proposal, uh, maybe brief summary of the what you call proposal, they, they will put on their website. Okay, so you will get a uh, information about which funding agencies are available to fund your idea. You will get uh, what you call information from such exercise. Then attend relevant conferences. Attend relevant conferences. Okay, and search the web. So, for example, here I'm quoting one NIH reporter, okay, that may not be relevant for uh, Indian PI, but if you visit this portal, NIH reporter, it's very, what you call extensive, very detailed uh, portal, where as per your core areas, what are the, what you call research proposals funded by NIH? Okay, National Institute of Health in US. Okay, now this, all the proposals, their PI, the summary of the research proposal, if there are funded, already funded and completed proposals, what was the outcome of that funded proposals? Okay, everything is given on the platform. Okay, now you can search that and get the ideas like what are the different things required for research funding now if i talk about research programs determine priorities and selection process okay imagine you found the right funding agency you found right research program then you have your your next job is to check what is their funding mechanism what are the eligible conditions? Okay. One of the eligible conditions may be that ad hoc, temporary, contractual faculty are not permitted. Or some research programs only fund the PI who are less than or equal to 35 years of age. Sometimes they give the what you call uh, reservation that OBC 37 year still okay. 40 years SCST is okay. So you understand what are the eligibility uh, conditions. Then mechanism. So sometimes funding agency invite concept proposal. It is reviewed. Once you get what you call uh, approval or your concept proposal is approved, what will happen? you will be asked to submit the full proposal. The full proposal will again go through the same review process. And if you still, what you call, convince the review panel, then you get a funding agency. So this is usual mechanism. Sometimes only funding, like the scheme is only for women. Okay. Or sometimes the that scheme is only for the women who had a career break. Okay, so these are the few conditions you have to understand properly and then only apply. Okay, so read the material on the web, program priorities, who has been funded and for what, what is the review process, who decides how peer review is conducted, size and duration of awards and success rate. Okay, imagine your, your what you call expectation or maybe your need that you should get a uh, funding at least more than 50 lakh you should get funding at least more than 50 lakh because you want to buy an instrument as well then maybe startup research grant may not be suitable for you why because they usually fund 25 lakhs plus overhead charges so your purpose is not solved so that funding scheme is not appropriate for you. Okay. So these are the few things you understand and then only apply. Because writing a research proposal takes a lot of time, submitting it, and then a review process. So imagine spending one year 
and you get uh, what you call rejection, that is very disappointing. Okay, so in that case, you you understand first what are the eligible uh, eligibility uh, criteria. Hmm? Contact other people who have been funded. What did it take for them to get funded? Okay. Then get to know the program officer. Okay. Is basically to visit, meet the in person, present your idea, get the feedback, find out what program officer cares most about, find out and influence what will happen in the future. Okay. Volunteer to serve as a review panel. Okay. See, you might be getting the call for review from a sir. Okay. So when you consistently help them to review the proposals, okay, so you come in the limelight that so-and-so reviewer is really good, timely gives the inputs, very punctual, okay. So this is how you develop a rapport with the program officer. Hmm? Then try to connect the program officer through conference, professional meetings, and treat him or her like a customer okay so when you when you develop a rapport with the program officer chances are that you understand you you know that when will be the next call for proposal for a particular uh, area hmm? then your next is write a responsive proposal okay responsive proposal means which have a high what you call possibility to hit the target. What is your target? To get the funding. Okay. So be responsive, innovative, and communicate well. Make sure that you have addressed all the requirements. Write the proposal for the audience. Understand who are the reviewers. Create an appropriate budget and plan and excel in all categories. Imagine you propose a really good piece of science. You propose a really good piece of science, and maybe you write a proposal of budget 80 lakh. Okay. And in 80 lakh, you're asking maybe 35 to 40 lakhs instrument. Okay. So what what can be the possibility then? If funding agency have a policy that your instrument should be maximum 20 to 25 percent of the total budget. They will straightforward reject your proposal. Why? We violated one situ one condition. Okay. Then you propose really good piece of science, but you propose the instrument which is only used for that project. Okay. You propose good piece of science, but you ask for the instrument. That instrument is only useful for that pro project. Okay. And there is what you call no one, even not you, is uh, what you call expert in that. Okay. So that, that instrument cannot be justifiable. Okay. In fact, buying the costly instrument for one time or one project. Okay, is not advisable. In fact, you should outsource that kind of activity and what you call complete the project. Okay, rather than asking the huge amount for buying the instrument. Okay, so these are the few things. So it's not only the science is what you call uh, reviewed. There are so many things. And that is what I said, the, you have to excel in all the categories. Hmm? Then develop the concept, understand literature needs, build from your strength, okay? Identify your vertical and develop the partners, reaction from the colleagues and peers, okay? Now, see, you are a pharmacologist and you are proposing that some novel formulation you're proposing and it's pharmacology, okay? And you're not adding any co-PI. So it will not give the confidence to reviewers. Okay. Why? Because you have not done any work in the formulation. In fact, no publication is supporting that you can work in a formulation 
then your proposal will become weak. Okay. Why? Because science is good. Hypothesis is good. Proposal is good. But yes, one thing what is lacking that there is no complementary team or competent team. Okay. So completion of the future of the what you call research proposal, what you call in a questionable. Hmm? And that is why you develop a right team, right approach, good piece of science, and give a, what you call every three months or six month timeline that how you will proceed and you will be successfully complete the proposal or project in a three years. Hmm? Writing follow section format exactly. What I mean, roughly I would say that summary should be in a one page or maybe maximum uh, 500 words and stick to that word count. Okay. If international status and national status is asked, then you should only cover the research projects, patents, which are published internationally in the international section and national in the national section. Okay. So what is asked in that particular section? What is the word count? What is the formatting? What is the sequence? Okay. You don't have choice. Okay. You have to strictly comply. Hmm? Clear statement of benefits and significance in abstract introduction and conclusion. Okay. So it's basically storytelling. You have to give very uh, complete picture that what exactly you will uh, start and what how you will finish. Okay. Include clear schedule, describe the deliverables. So if patent is deliverable or outcome, publication is outcome, maybe one skilled manpower is outcome, okay, one device or kit is outcome, or better process, better yield is outcome, okay, so give that. Hmm? Then justify budget expenditures, okay, you cannot ask 3 lakhs in travel. Okay, why? Because wherever you go in India, okay, in fact, now in India, there are so many research facilities and research, uh, what you call sophisticated analytical instrumentation facility that you will not have to travel from north to south and south to north. Okay, maybe if you are working in a Nashik, maximum you have to go to Mom uh, Mumbai. Okay. Maybe IIT Delhi for carrying out the, some sample analysis of really uh, and use the sophisticated instrumentation. Okay. So you have to justify. Okay. So that is what is required. If you ask for a JRF, then please refer how much they give you in a JRF. Then how much is a what you call um, HRA, okay, house rent allowance in your city? Accordingly, prepare your uh, what you call total fellowship or manpower cost. Okay, then present your qualification. Hmm? How you are best person to what you call execute that project? You have to what you call justify that. Hmm? Then these are the few things when you write the proposal. It must be hypothesis driven. Should be concise and focus. It should support a preliminary data. Now, this is very important point. Okay. So imagine there are two proposals. Okay. Good in a what you call a hypothesis. Everything is well. But proposal A or the PIA carried out some work, included the primary results. Okay. Or they carried out the preliminary work, published it in a journal. And they are included, they, they included that publication and based on that they are proposing that this much work is done and this remaining work we are proposing and that's why we need a funding. So that person have a high chances of getting the funding. Why? Because that PI is already in the process. Okay. Already carried out some work. Already that their hypothesis is working. Okay. So compared to the person who have not included preliminary results, okay, this person may or this PI may get the advantage. Okay. 
So if you have a preliminary data, then please include it. Okay. Spend more efforts on experimental plan. Restate the hypothesis, present the rational, then describe the research plan, describe the methodology, provide the rational plan for failure. Okay. What I mean, describe the methodology. So if you have three objectives, okay, if you have three objectives, what are the methods, what are the experiments, what are the assays you will carry out to fulfill that objective or achieve that uh, target, okay? So objective one, maybe to procure, standardize, characterize some formulation, okay? Then what are the experiments you are required? Maybe your HPLC analysis, maybe LCMS, okay? So you have to propose the materials and methods objective-wise, okay? Objective one, material and methods. Objective two, material and methods, okay? So this is what the right way to uh, write a proposal. Hmm? Then hypothesis. So hypothesis... See, X is interesting, let's study it. That's the what you call hypothesis, okay? X regulates the X chromosome inactivation by binding to X chromosome to be inactivated, okay? Now, is interesting and here you know the facts and figures and that's why you're proposing the hypothesis. So this one is what you call more clear rather than this vague hypothesis. Interesting is not indicating anything. Okay. But yes, so something is regulated and that's why the inactivation happens and that's why the X chromosome to be inactivated. So this hypothesis is more crystal clear, okay? So be focused, be specific when you propose any hypothesis. Do not just use the technical technique to address or experiment area without well-formulated hypothesis, okay? Now, next is your specific aims, okay? Specific aims can be two or maximum three, okay? So half page to be concisely defined what you intend to do and why. Then background and significance. Half or maybe one page maximum to review the public publish information in support of your hypothesis and bring out the importance. Here, what is the problem? What is the solution? What are the limitations of the existing solution? And that's why how this, your proposed solution will be better than your existing solution. This is what you can have a back, background and significance. Then preliminary data. This is again a one page section to use in support of your hypothesis. Okay. An experimental plan is basically a two page section that allows the reviewers to understand how you actually going to execute that project, okay? Then specific aim and detailed summary. So state overall hypothesis, give enough background, but spell out the specific aims of your proposal, okay? And followed by concise summary of your expected results, okay? Background, what you will expect? to write or expected to write, provide a good overview of the field, need to know the basis and what are the gaps in the knowledge. I told you that what is the problem, what are the solutions, what are the limitations of the existing solution and how your proposed solution can address the existing limitation. Okay, that is what your background. Hmm? Because this is the vertical section where you try to convince that what is lacking and how you are trying to, uh, what you call, fill up that gap. Hmm? Preliminary data, not always possible to have the preliminary data, but it helps a lot, okay? 
show that technique has worked for a related project. Data that show that hypothesis is sound. Okay, I told you that we, if you have a hypothesis, sorry, preliminary data, then that gives a, a more confidence to reviewers that you are in the process, you, you your hypothesis is right, and you are capable to handle the pro project. Now, what are you really going to do? That is what the what we call material method. Hmm? This section is the heart of a grant application, but many people spend so much time on a background and preliminary data section, and they run out by end of the proposal. Okay, so you have to what you call uh, highlight this section as well. Now, as, as I told you that uh, aims can be two to four, but uh, you uh, but but right or you can say optimum is three and aim should not be interdependent on one another okay then provide the outline for your experimental approach restate each specific aim restate hypothesis provide rational provide detailed plan what are the expected outcomes what is a novelty okay now i told you that if you're uh, like proposing any idea that how it is unique, okay? How it differentiates from existing one. So if you were to go successfully convince, then your chances of getting the funding will be high, okay? Then background. So background, I told you that uh, this is what the you have to add. Then introduction study title, context, and objectives, literature review. So uh, literature review basically uh, what is published, what is what you call uh, indicated out of that publication, OK? That is you have to cover in the literature review. If it is asked, like, what are the patents in that area, then you have to, again, include the patent uh, search data as well okay then research questions research questions should be uh, smart okay means specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound okay so specific means if you are funded for three years then specific objectives only can be achieved vague and open-ended objectives may not be achieved okay and that is why your research question should be smart okay what is smart specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound measurable means you carry out this set of experiments you will get this outcome maybe maybe characterize uh, crude material, maybe a uh, characterized formulation, okay, maybe a uh, tested diagnostic kit, okay. So, your what you call research question should be measurable, achievable. I told you that three years, then you propose that much only which can be completed in three years. Don't be over ambitious, okay? That I will do this and this and this, okay? So that is what is more important, okay? So these are the few weak and strong research question examples. Research question, will holding workshop reduce the school violence? Can high school suspension rates maybe change? Can identity or be determined by carbon dating? Okay, these are the weak research questions. Why? Because there is no specific time, no specific deliverables. Okay. So right and or the strong research question should be in this manner: that will one hour hands-on car seat training sessions 
reduce child motor vehicle injuries in Winnipeg. Okay, so intervention cut uh, time is one hour. What is the intervention? Hands on car seat training. Okay. Now, which population you want to target? Only those are living in Winnipeg, Canada. Winnipeg is one of the city. So you are only targeting the people living in Winnipeg, not other areas or not other cities. So this is what the strong research question, which complies most of the things in SMART. Okay. Methodology. So here you have to ask 5W1H, okay, so that you will understand which parameters, which method, and why, and how, and when, okay. So procedure like research designs can be qualitative, quantitative, mixed methods cross-sectional, longitudinal, primary or secondary data analysis, okay? So these are the various methodologies you, you have to use. Then in which participants you want to test or study the, what you call um, your hypothesis? And key questions, could someone ELSE carry out his entire project? Okay, can someone else carry out this entire project, okay? So you have to justify that why you are best. Hmm? Then anticipated findings and their significance. Key factor in research endeavor is, is anticipated results. Will this project contribute to science, knowledge, and innovation? Why will your proposal be chosen over others? for funding and what is what you call major impact okay imagine uh, your research question is uh, formulation okay maybe dietary nutraceutical or polyherbal formulation which is going to help the uh, hepatotoxicity okay because of maybe alcohol maybe because of uh, uh, various reasons Okay, so what is the impact? Okay, or see, uh, let me quote one example. This artemisinin compound drug discovery, lady got the Nobel Prize. Okay, now why she got the Nobel Prize? Okay, because she's not what you call publishing in any nature, sales, or science journal. She is also not a professor. Okay. She published multiple papers in maybe few impact factor journal, but not in a sale nature or science. Then why was still got she got the Nobel Prize? Because impact impact was huge. Hmm? So imagine when people are developing, majority of the people developing the resistance to the chloroquine okay and when there is a high incidence and prevalence of infection rate of the malaria in maybe developing worlds like the south africa and others okay and if someone discovers what you call new drug which is very effective for all four species strains of the malaria then that's a that, that discovery has a huge impact. Why? Because it will save a lot of what you call expenditure on our health. It will prevent a lot of mortality and it will also be helpful in chloroquine resistant malaria patients. So impact is huge and that's why that her Nobel, uh, her discovery was qualified for Nobel Prize. Okay. Now, uh, I don't know what is the problem of this uh, formatting. Uh, proposed budget and timeline. So proposed budget, all inclusive, research how much all supplies, materials, and research assistant cost. 
for personal you must uh, factor in a benefits and vacation time then no padding evaluators are aware of what uh, thing cost and can include student charges hire supplies and travel cost okay so you cannot propose the uh, what you call exaggerated cost of a very small instrument why because review panel or review panel members notes that which instrument will cost how much in the market okay so so they are not full they know it okay why because they are in the panel because they have done the research they have some uh, credibility caliber okay then propose timeline determine how much time allotted then batch the different task to complete the overall break them or further and then prepared a grand chart uh, to to monitor okay now sell your idea okay so that you get a funding from uh, agency now once you write the proposal okay you will always feel that your proposal really perfect okay this happens this is a human tendency okay after some stage you don't find any lacuna maybe spelling errors or maybe formatting maybe compliance to the vertical agencies guidelines okay so it's better to take the feedback from your mentor from your colleague from your department head okay so that you get the unbiased opinion hmm? then proposal writing yes uh, these are the few main questions like who should write okay now uh, align the application with the review criteria that core review criteria the significance investigator innovation approach and uh, environment okay significance is basically relevance okay like if you do something or proposing something why okay then significance then investigator see you have I, i told you that you have to give the confidence to the reviewer panel that you are capable enough to tell this project okay in fact if it comes beyond this uh, proposed pro uh, proposal you have a capacity to what you call execute then innovation okay such or proposals are not accepted okay you need a innovation you need a uniqueness through your proposal then approach so whether you are using maybe 1970s or 80s uh, research methods or uh, methods to, to estimate the parameters or you are measuring by lcms nmr or uplc okay or flame photometer or atomic photo, uh, spectrophotometer okay or radio ligand assay okay so your approach is also important hmm? then uh, so funding your interest and the interest of the funding agency no matter how good your idea how well written your proposal if the agency to which you are not, you are applying is not interested in your project then you will not be funded okay so it's better to work Uh, and uh, spend more time on uh, finding the right funding agency okay then uh, these are the two questions uh, what should they do and can they do it okay there are only two questions usually reviewer ask okay whether it is urgent whether it is priority of the funding agency or the that country that we should work on that uh, funding agency okay then only you should uh, submit the proposal okay and if answer to first question is s yes, then what is the question answer to the next question that is can they do it okay 
So can they do it is indicated through your publication, through your papers, through your research grants, through your uh, skill and training, qualification, okay? Now develop a strong research plan. Grab the reader immediately. His roadmap for your public application is decided. Now you begin the, your proposal with the state general purpose. Include some key supporting data. State the hypothesis. State long-term objectives and expected impact. So imagine you have a big idea, but that big idea cannot be uh, what you call worked upon in three years. So what you will do, you will propose the complete idea and put up a part of the idea in a proposal, okay, for a first uh, attempt, okay? And then, uh, so, so this is a better way to convince the reviewer that in uh, long term, what exactly you want to achieve by carrying out this proposal. Significance, answer the so what question shows overall understanding of the field, demonstrate that questions are novel, important, and represent the logical next step in research, highlight critical gaps that will be addressed by the proposed researcher. Then innovation. OK, I told you that innovation uh, is really important. OK, why? Because most of the funding agencies usually ask, what is the IPR value? will be generated out of this proposed studies. OK, uh, let me tell you, there is an innovation and translational research scheme of ICMR. They, in the beginning, only ask whether patent is possible out of this pro uh, project. OK, so and, and they, they are pressing really hard to publish more and more patents, more and more patents. OK. And uh, uh, what you call generate a lot of IPR value hmm? because that is their mandate. Then uh, preliminary studies I already explained. Then approach I uh, explain in terms of material and methods. Okay. Now uh, if I talk about few hallmarks of outstanding grant application, then strong significance. Important problem in public health, impact is high, then your proposal will likely to be uh, funded. High degree of novelty and innovation, strong track record of well qualified applica uh, applicant compelling the publication, clear rational, relevant supportive preliminary data, clear focus, a uh, clear and focus approach that provides a, um, uh, what you call really uh, refined results and careful attention details like attention to spelling punctuation grammar fonts clarity of data error bars and spelling okay so these are the things required these are the few common reasons for weak application obviously what i told the indicators of the strong applicant application then these are the few uh, opposite, like what are the different reasons cited for weak application, okay? Now, let me tell you few myths. Technical and scientific merits alone determine the winners. No, okay? I told you that only science is not important. You have to excel in all areas. Proposals should always be written for top experts in the field. So if you write for the top experts, you will write too much technical. And not necessarily that top experts will be available to review your proposal. OK? Only peers pick the proposal. Don't ask your colleagues to review your proposal. They won't appreciate it anyway. OK? No worry. If they don't appreciate, in fact, it's good if they criticize you. If they point out these are the things, these are the things lacking or these are the mistakes or blunder mistakes, then it's always better to get rejected by internal faculty rather than rejected by 
external funding agency. Why? Because it's a waste of time. So you spend six months to write a proposal. It takes one year to review the proposal or get the review or decision on your proposal. So imagine one and a half year on a one proposal. Okay. So uh, it's not affordable. Okay. And that's why more and more feedback, critical inputs you must take from your colleagues. Okay. Then these are the few steps uh, to be written to reviewer and time and effort distribution. So I, you can see that looking for a funding call, it may take 25% of your time. Okay. Then planning the proposal, 25%. Writing the technical narrative, 35%. Administrative part like endorsement letter, mandate form. Okay, these are the few documents required to be uh, signed by PI to be signed by your competent authority. Okay, so you have to consider the time of your uh, what you call registrar or vice chancellor or maybe your HOD if you have a practice of funding from this dignitaries only, then it will take maybe 10 to 15 days. And that's why you have to also take care of the administrative part. Hmm? So imagine if it's a multiple institute funding agency and to be signed by the competent authority of multiple institutes, then you have to consider that, okay? More myths, it's a good idea to submit the same proposal to some several agencies. No. In fact, they take you the take the what you call declaration that you have not submitted to any other funding agency. Plagiarism is not there. This is your original and uh, your idea. So this kind of declarations are usually taken. Follow your own writing style. Reviewers don't care about the guidance. No. See, reviewers are there to reject your proposal. They are not there to fund your proposal. Okay. So you have to convert their negative decision into your positive decision in your favor. And that's why you don't give any silly reason to reject your proposal. Then don't worry about schedules and sch uh, schedule uh, deliverable. Okay, this is the results. No, open end questions. Okay, and what you call uh, not focus approach will lead to a denial or rejection of the proposal. Hmm? Then uh, reality is is basically opposite to what we talked about in myths. Okay. Now, what peer wants? Innovation and significance, I already told. Responsiveness to the proposal program. Care in writing proposal. And capability to accomplish the objectives. Okay? These are the things are must. And what managers wants? They want full programmatic priorities, complementary work, investigators who are good to work with Okay, and then no black marks, always deliver on promises. Okay, so imagine your this is your research grant, uh, maybe for three years. Okay, now your first grant is still ongoing, and for first grant, this is the third year. Okay, so you want to ensure the continuity of funding. Okay, but Imagine in first grant itself, you didn't publish no patent, no device, no product, or not even research paper. So what happens? Reviewers and program officer feels that this person is not good for carrying out this piece of science. Okay. So what you write you deliver to them. 
Hmm? So that is what the most important. Then, uh, so to summarize here, begin with the innovation and significance. Treat program like uh, officers like a customer. Get much feedback as possible to avoid the risk. And uh, you can increase the probability of being picked if you are a good researcher. And these are the few steps. Okay. These are the funding agencies. Now, your visibility is important. So, you should have a capability statement. Then, Google Scholar regularly update. Many times, if you have published in a Scopus or Web of Science Index or Permit Science Index Journal, Google Scholar automatically takes your newly published paper in your Google Scholar uh, publication list. But sometimes it may not happen. So, time to time, you have to visit your Google Scholar profile and ensure that all the research papers which you publish are listed in that profile. Because Google Scholar is easy to access and uh, that gives you uh, confidence to review panel. ResearchGate, LinkedIn, FB, Scopus, and others. Okay, So develop a pro uh, profile, maintain it, and time to time uh, improve it. Okay, So getting grant is really tedious task, time consuming task, very uh, sometimes it becomes de demotivating. Why? Because if you see in this cartoon, okay, they have the different weapons. What I mean, they are they are experts in a different areas, okay, which will comment on your core area, and to convince them, you have to be really excel in all areas, and if you convince all of them then you successfully get your first research grant, okay? So that's it from my side. If you have any questions, then uh, I'll be most happy to answer. Dr. Prashant? Uh, till now, we have not received okay. any question so far. Thank you, sir, for discussing ABC of research proposal writing. Sir, you have discussed right from identifying own goal pro uh, for <clears throat> writing a proposal, identifying a right agency, then selecting uh, our priority and uh, then writing a proposal. A research proposal must be concise, focused, and should have preliminary supporting data. Sir, you have discussed a four important component of research proposal, like specific aim, background, and significance, preliminary data, and experimental plan. Thank you, sir, for discussing that proposal budget and timeline for the proposal is equally important. Sir, from your talk, we come to know that writing a research proposal is like a military operation. It takes discipline, foresight, research strategies, and if it is done in a right way, then it will end in victory. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Gokhale Education Society, Sir Dr. M.S. Gosavi, College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, I would like to present a certificate as a token of love. Please accept, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Now I declare that, uh, sir, just a minute, we have received one question. Can we go for a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Sir, on screen, there is a question. Can mm -hmm. only PhD registered can apply for grant? Uh, only registered can apply for a grant. See, uh, I already told you uh, in the beginning that uh, you have to find out the right agency, right scheme, and understand their rules. 
so if you are a registered phd student then probably you are eligible for srf okay like uh, icmr announces um, ad hoc proposal that time only they also advertise the uh, what you call srf so under srf they have a what you call uh, format you apply that include your research publications and if your research idea like phd topic is interesting and some outcomes are expected or uh, what you call uh, possible then uh, you may get the funding okay but yes you do have uh, what you call uh, get the srf not the ad hoc grant or extramural grant extramural or uh, ad hoc grant is only for a permanent faculty uh, so so phd register like registered student can only get the srf or fellowship or you you can appear for a um, the csir net icmr net dbt okay that can be possible then uh, another scheme that uh, wos there are wos a and b so uh, those uh, women have a career break and they were a topper in their masters okay they are usually applicable uh, sorry eligible for this uh, funding okay so bottom line is that you have to understand what is the eligibility criteria uh then you can apply writing research people research proposal writing uh, so please accept our certificate as a token of love thank you so much uh, with this i conclude that day one is concluded here thank you delegates thank you so much sir for uh, giving your mm -hmm. valuable time and sharing your knowledge with us thank you thank you delegates uh, for attending the today's session now i uh, now i declare that the day one is concluded here and we will start tomorrow day two with the session one of day two thank you thank you very much okay should i leave the studio Yes sir. Yes sir.